Keep an eye on shares of Qualcomm surging this morning after a beat on both the top and bottom lines. John Ford sat down exclusively with Qualcomm CEO Steve Mullenkopf last night. Joins us now with more on the quarter and that conversation here at Post 9. John. Leslie, yeah, $92 a share. I mean, the last time we saw $92 a share on Qualcomm, it's been a, a really long time. And after the last quarter, uh, there were some concerns, particularly about the, the way that some of Qualcomm's customers, the OEMs, had slowed down this current generation, and their purchases and plans ahead of 5G. H here's what Steve said about that. What you're seeing in the handset market is you're seeing um, the China handset OEMs take a bit of a pause before 5G is coming. They're selling 4G inventory and they just have tremendous amount of activity in designing 5G devices. And we talked about this in our last earnings call. Mm -hmm. You still see it in this earnings call. Of course, we guided and said you know, we expect to see it through the end of this calendar year, but then we expected to see a, uh, an inflection point in the first quarter of calendar 2020. The licensing business for Qualcomm particularly strong. It helps to have Apple paying again, given the quarter that Apple had as well. Now, South Korea, as, as we're looking forward to 5G, a lot of people are seeing that as a bellwether because they have a very strong wireless market. It looks like they're ramping 5G faster than they did 4G. Uh, Qualcomm, as, as we'll, we'll talk more about later, is also leaning into this uh, trend in China toward really advancing not just 5G at the high end of phones, but they're pushing for 5G to be in phones in 2020 as cheap as the equivalent of 300 bucks per handset. So they're really pushing for there to be a lot of 5G phones. Now the question outstanding guys is, are people going to really buy those phones? Are they going to demand them? We don't know that yet. And are, we go are they going to demand them in 2020? Yes. Year? How soon will that uh, incentivize people to actually buy more phones? Well, what we don't see yet is the software applications that might drive demand for this. We might start to see hints of that. Apple's WWDC, for example. I mean, they're not going to come out and say what sorts of features are going to be in the next iPhone, but everybody sort of expects there's going to be 5G. Are they going to have video features or gaming type features that would take advantage of that faster kind of connection to entice consumers to upgrade to a phone with that kind of technology? I think it's one thing if handset makers are making 5G phones and if 5G networks are available in major cities, that's great, but is there going to be the incentive for people to really upgrade at a rate that will translate into revenue. And we've talked to analysts who think 5G, the latency improvements are not consumer centric, let's say, right? Yeah. Goldman's Rod Hall, for example. Some people have said that. I'll tell you, and, and granted, I, I don't, I try not to believe too much in technology, right? Because there are marketers out there selling this stuff. I've seen it at Mobile World Congress. Got another look at Qualcomm today. There are some really compelling advantages in speed that 5G does offer. And yet, yeah, maybe compared to what you've got today, if you think your phone is fast enough, great. But if you want to download, say, a whole long fight's worth of movies, and you don't want to have to do that on your home Wi-Fi the, network. The night before. Yeah. I mean, if those of us yeah, who have kids, we, we know the problem. But John right? Mollenkopf yeah. will take every opportunity to talk about the long-term opp opportunity here being more about the enterprise and the Internet of Things uh -huh. and connected devices in a fa on a factory floor or connecting a surgeon in one place with a device in another that's actually committed doing the surgery robotically. Uh -huh. Did he talk at all about that? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I talked to some of Qualcomm's engineering leaders about that. Those are phases of 5G. We're talking 2021, 2022, before you start to see the, the kinds of factory floor customization uh, possibilities out of 5G. Because not only do you have to have certain standards still put into place, but then the, the design process for those for that factory equipment is a, is a bit longer lead time than they got to test it out. The, the nearer term opportunity is really about phones. That's where a lot of the volume might be. And, you know, I think we could be underestimating, uh, or at least Rod Hall might be <laughs> underestimating what 5G could do, but I'm not sure yet what the applications might be to drive that consumer interest. But, I mean, I, I remember when people were saying, well, who needs faster than a Pentium, right? Uh, who needs faster than DSL? People really like speed, right? And when you, if you give them a compelling reason to have it, uh, it, it, can, it can really do things. So, first phones, fixed wireless broadband, he and I talked about as well, 
longer term, you also have those enterprise plays. 5G, unlike 4G and LTE, it's not one thing. It's potentially a lot of different layers. The question for me is, is Qualcomm really going to get a big boost out of that? We'll see.